frontier. This is Football Daft with Stephen Purden. Midfield Dynamo and average actor. Chris Toll. Target man. Suspicious character. And... With a top end of Stevenson, Grenado! Welcome to Football Daft. It is the Daft Scottish Football Podcast around. I am producer John. Let us welcome the team, shall we? Let's introduce first a man who this week was banned from Twitter. It's Stephen <laughs> Gordon. Were you? <laughs> well, I sent it in the group chat. Did you read that? No. <laughs> I wasn't, I wasn't banned. My account was locked for a wee while because <laughs> of the... Do you want me to read it to you? I didn't even know this, though. Right. Hey, hold on. I got an email, right? And I've never it said been with the Twitter. Oh, I didn't get banned. I didn't get banned. Right, you might put that phone down sometimes, man. <laughs> I'll see you. Cool. Get <laughs> on track in a minute. We'll get on track in a minute. So it was, it was the cause of music that was used. It was Dear Sir Madam, I'm contacting you on behalf of the International Federation Federation of the Phonographic Industry and the record companies it represents. Our membership across IFPI and its network, blah, 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 blah. The information set, where is it? Where? We have learned that your service is making available distributing and refer- referring linking users. We have included in the table below the URL for the locations we have identified. They're asking for it coming down. So it was the video that me and John are going to be collaboration on of ladies and gentlemen, I give you Bundesliga expert Chris Toll, and it was because we used the Simon and Garfunkel song, Hello Darkness, My Old Friend. Oh, <laughs> right. oh, I'll I tell you what, I would report you again, all over again. Every <laughs> day. I was just thinking. <laughs> every day. And that man there is one Scott employee of the month for saving a life, and he only got a certificate for it, but we can't talk about it. It's Chris Toll. That's just true. Not allowed to talk about. Not all superheroes wear capes. But I'll exactly. tell you something: the population is plus one because of me. That's exactly, mate. That, You're a superhero. Superhero, and you can. We can't talk about it. And finally, a man who's been getting it tight and trolled off a bunch of wings on Twitter this week <laughs> <laughs> from a guy who plays computer games on Twitch. It's the one and only Grado. I mean, how can you say it's like at me, Grado? I fucking dived to my house at right, me. Hold on, I think we've got... Right, so remember... You what you're saying, because he's gonna stream in date I, I, I know he'll be listening to it in his Ma's bare basement, right? But, like, let's... You know, we've got to talk... Don't want to we've got, we've got mess with a TikToker, mate. Right, oh, fuck the TikTokers. <laughs> right, Last week on the show, remember we were talking about Gradle playing a charity match, and Gradle was saying, "Oh, I was I had the glory in front of me. He missed a, the penalty. He Gradle fight, he Gradle fight the story, man. Yeah, I know he's right. anyway. Listen, no, see before you move on, because uh-huh. that, that's this this is what annoyed me the most. Uh-huh. I agree to find oh, oh, you see, he's a big fucking golden wonder, <laughs> and your fucking thumb hanging in it. <laughs> I put the costume and I'm talking to. Sorry, lads. Yeah, you see, it's hot. You're, you're holding your thumb just in the fucking golden wonder. Like, <laughs> you can, if you get the video version, you can see Chris. Do you know what really fucks me off? They changed the golden wonder from blue, ready, salty to red. That's anyway. Sorry, continue, Grado. Right. So I know that sometimes I've got a habit of exaggerating stuff. Yes. Right. Aye. But I didn't exaggerate that last, that, that last week. It was yeah, because it was, because I was fifty. Mate. Keep... You didn't hit it straight at him. He dived to his <laughs> left to save it. I beat he died. I Right, I tell I, you I, what. I, 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 I tell you what, let's this Twitcher heard the podcast last week and has report retorted to Grado on Twitter. So let's play the clip and we'll also get to see if you're watching the video version, Grado's miss penalty. Okay, so let's look at the clip right now. Here's the story and the video. And of course, was I know the last penalty taker, the fifth and final penalty taker. And the first I'm listening to the podcast, playing so Grand Theft Auto. Nothing wrong with that. I don't think it was to win the game, that. So the the game either. The goalkeeper was a twitcher. I thought, fuck it, I'll go. <laughs> He's talking about me, I thought, too. And the PA's gone, no, 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 it's great to take the penalty if you win the game for the blue team. Oh, remember that he goes where we were. Yeah, I was. Such a horrible feeling. I was in the corner. You put it bottom right, and I'm fucking bummed out, man. Go, babe. Strovies is one of them simple. Grado talk shit. He put it to his bottom right, and I palmed it wide. Do you know what? I'll get the video. I'll show you the video. Look at this. Grado says he put this down the middle. By the way. The guy's not doing the fucking middle. <laughs> that is the middle. He's not in the middle. 
Bob. Anyway, right. Do you know what's better than that? Do you know what's better than that? Right. What I liked even more, what this created, because I'm I don't start back filming over city until a week in Monday, right? So my days are long, right? When my wings go to school, see when Grado goes retro and goes like fucking, I don't know, like 2010 Grado and starts tweeting and all that, you know what I mean? And getting involved in <laughs> Like me when I'm pushed after the Rangers game. When he goes 2008 Crystal. Aye. <laughs> <laughs> so so this, that, this young female, right, called Erin, right, he said, I was there at Grado Wrestling. Tag- oh, fuck, hold on. Aye, she's tagged him in it and said, I was there at Grado Wrestling. It wasn't in the middle and Grado took his time <laughs> He reply and just reply, cool, with a thumbs up. <laughs> <laughs> so this and boy, then this boy, hold on, this boy says, call her out, Grado Wrestling. What do you think, Grado? Uh, where's the footage for after the penalty? Fairly routine save. You're actually doing yourself out of glory because it was definitely win the game. Anyway, I'm out it. We, will still, we still won anyway. At Graham Junior Watt. Tell him. <laughs> <laughs> so, so this twi- uh, Twitcher, TikToker, whatever he is, T- at TTV's Jose Santana is calling you out here, Grado. How you, how, what are you going to do uh, with this? The only thing I've got to do about is uh, when I was biting to these lasses on Twitter and give me guys and stuff like that, I was like, oh, fuck, I hope Bob doesn't see this. <laughs> 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 you fucking saw it all. I was like, how did you come across that? I was purely like, feces me, he annoys me up, man, for biting. <laughs> See, like you're saying, Gredo, and John's come in and says, oh, he can have a go at me, fees Ma's basement. I've just had a look at his account. He's got nearly 700,000 followers. <laughs> oh, shit. Oh, 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 I know. Aye. You Mate, fucked it, man. You don't fuck with a TikToker, man. Ryan, Ryan, don't cut that out. Let's see what happens to John. <laughs> ah, fucking bring it on, TTV, Hosanna. <laughs> Whatever your name is. John, man. John, mate. Ago. John. What? Honestly, man. That's fucking... I, you're you're what, just going to get posted on TikTok, mate. Uh, no. And you know what? I, I kind of like the boy. <laughs> I, I think he's a great guy. And if he wants to share my, my TikTok at the real time Spragans, by all means, do <laughs> it. There you go. Brilliant. There you go. See, a lot of work for you there. A lot of work for you there. Anyway, I'll not be getting back up to Aberdeen. <laughs> That's him. <laughs> <laughs> anyway, more about Aberdeen a bit later on. Uh, mind the fuck about work chat last week, boys, when Mer Fraser, who worked at Bathgate, train station and helped the tramp get away with a four thousand pound bike by sorry <laughs> chain remember we asked the question we went back to him and said did you get the sack for this fraser he got back in touch and says haha fuck knows how i didn't get the sack a week later however someone stole the radiator out the bathroom and walked out the front door i never noticed it because i was watching darts on my ipad did you say i wasn't very popular i've left now though so fuck them ha 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 um <laughs> So that was the conclusion to Fraser's stint at the Bathgate train station. Uh, no birthday corner this week, Chris. Thank, uh, thank fuck, man. But, but, but you're going to be going. You're going to be going horse talk, man. I don't know what that singing you're doing. But no, Scott I, I, I don't go. I don't go horse. I go Shetland pony. <laughs> I knew you were going to say something like that. I knew it. I fucking knew it. Scott <laughs> Bailey's going to take your satisfactory this. drink. Beautiful. There you go. In <laughs> case anybody didn't get that, that was a hate joke. That. Yeah. Hi guys, hope you're all well. Massive fan of the podcast, found it during lockdown and went down a rabbit hole with all the old episodes. I'm marrying my lovely fiance Robin next Saturday and she's Aww. sick of hearing the sound of the boys in the house, particularly Stephen Purder's laughter and Toe singing. Any chance <laughs> of a wee message from Toe ahead of the big day in the style of Tina Turner? I'm sure no. she would love nothing more than her bridesmaid playing it while they get ready. So she- Chris... Could you sing Go Into the Chapel in the style of Tina Turner? Is that possible? She doesn't deserve it. She doesn't deserve it. I don't, no. I don't think she does deserve it. Why? I'm honest with you. I'm she's sick of listening to me and Toe. And I'm going to tell you something else, right? She might be yeah. sick of listening to us. I might, she might not be my favourite person on earth. But I don't want to ruin the lassie's wedding day, John. Right. <laughs> so so, so lovely let's, move, Robin. let's move on. For the, for the lovely Robin, to- Tina Bob- Turner. Going to the chapel. So I can't cool. let this go any longer, mate. You've got a bit of golden wonder crust stuck under your beak, mate. What? <laughs> <laughs> no, no, I, I have no grey, that's a grey hair, mate. Oh, that's right, okay. All right, okay. There Chris go. Toll, going to the chapel in the style of Tina Turner. Going to the chapel and I'm going to get mad. <laughs> I said I'm going to the chapel. I'm going to get married. 
going to the chapel. And I'm going to get married. Gonna have a long life, a long happy life. <laughs> Me and my man will be man and wife. Oh, good. He's good. That's all I can think. <laughs> I hope the reception don't stink. Because <laughs> you're gonna get married. <laughs> and the temple gonna get married. Yeah, I <laughs> that is, I, can I say something? Can I say something? That is the best one yeah, yet. Oh, that was, that was brilliant, 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 mate. That, that was brilliant. Was if you want a wee musical message from Christopher Toll, get in touch. Uh, I'm going to start fucking Apple. charging for it. Yeah, in you fact, do you want to know something? You only get one if you sign up to the Patreon. There, how do you like your apples? There you go. Oh, there you That's go. A deal. There you go. Uh, in so fact, boys, do you know what? If you sign up to the Patreon, you get one, no matter what. Right, there you go. Sign up to the Patreon, patreon.com forward slash football daft. Uh, and you can uh, uh, play me at FIFA and you can uh, get an autograph after Edo. Uh, I'm Credo yeah, ha- sure. happy, not you? <laughs> <laughs> so, what's in the middle? been happening in Scottish football, boys? Uh, let's talk about Scotland first off. Last week we were sitting here predicting we're going to pump the Republic of Ireland. What the fuck happened at the weekend? Jeez. It's shite being Scottish. Mm. Yeah. Well, the lowest of the low. It's coming to fucking earth. I was getting my... I was getting oh, pissed man. off watching international football but end up there. Uh. I'm, I'm so, so oh. glad I was on the night shift, man, because I've never seen any of it. Oh, it was terrible. Absolutely. Mm. I don't know what happened. I do not know what happened to the, the team. It was... It, it, the... Def- the way we defend, man, it's like every time Ireland went forward, they looked like they were going to score. Yeah, and and Duffy. It was Duffy. Time, it was Duffy man, near. The corners, the corners. Right? And I'll tell you something, right? Shoot me down in flames all you want. John McGinn needs to do more. Mm. He needs to do more. Honestly, see if that's another player, that performance against Ireland. See if it's anybody else. They're fucking caught in it. They're getting dogs abuse, mm. right? See John McGinn for me. See these games. Like two, two closes came in at 40. Him. He's got to make the keeper work. The second one, he doesn't even make the keeper work and Ireland got the part of score. Do you know what I mean? It's like, if you're that, I don't know. I just, sometimes I look at him and I think he flatters to deceive. Cracking arse, but... Yeah, he has got a cracking arse. The players looked out in their arse, talking about arses. They just looked like it, knackered. They look, all looked absolutely knackered, you know. They played a lot of football. I, I mean... Do you give that as an excuse? So, because I guess I, 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 they probably played a lot more games than the Irish players have played. Because of obviously, there's a lot more of them playing in Europe. A lot more. We've got heavier schedules with with the championship. I wish Clark happened. would just stick to at least stick to the, a team that he's going to play every time. Because I feel as if he's, he swaps it a bit too much. I think you'd, uh, these games you've got to, because I mean, these nation leagues games have kind of replaced friendlies. So I think he's trying different things. They're but, just nah. fucking glamorised friendlies, aren't they? They are, they are really. But I mean, obviously, we then went on uh, beat Armenia. But I have to say that first half, it, until they got a man sent off, we weren't looking too sharp either. Just balls. And over they the top three at the back, thing. mate. The, yeah. the three at the back just kept getting. Every time Armenia came forward as well, like the I said, ball, about the over the game, top. every time, I, every time. I, but obviously, what you up to, Tom? <laughs> Actually, <laughs> I, sorry, I had sun stuck my tooth there. I had to fucking pick it up. Disgusting. Uh, yeah. right. and, and, so, so and again, everyone all right? Aye. Again, is, if there you, any, is there anything you to talk about? No, I'm not talking about. You sure? Aye. Uh, have, I done, yeah. have I done something? I don't know, have you? Because you seem like you have. Mate, honestly, okay, I've, I've, had, I've had a shot upgrade that you're going to make me paranoid as fuck. <laughs> <laughs> no, no, I'm just thinking, I'm. No, uh, I'm just tired, lads. I'm right. Just right. Okay, okay. So, yeah, the, yeah, the, yeah. The Armenia, we're going, and that's kind of. This is kind of international football, and we're kind of in a football void for the next few weeks. Um, it's not stopped. There's news happening. No, Dundee United uh, have announced the departure of Tam Coach. We were talking about that last week. It's not Rekia, Recheka he's going to, though. Mm. It looks like it's Hungarian club Budapest Honved that he's heading to now. Again, yeah, just... some outfit, man. <laughs> I couldn't tell you anything about them. <laughs> Could not say anything about them. Uh, but, they, I mean... Fair play to him, you know, he's obviously went, right, 
I've had a good season. I might move on and try and prove my worth somewhere else and try and increase my money or what have you. But well, good. I think good on him that he's gone to a country like that because you know he could end up going down to England playing league, managing a League Two team. You'll never see him again. I think respect him for. It, it's kind of it kind of it, it touches on a wee bit what Toole was saying. Was it a couple of weeks ago or something? Dundee United were a very hard team to beat. He looked like he had a good yeah. kind of yeah. system going there. And it's another manager leaving our country that you go, he's got something about him, but he's away. Because I think it just speaks volumes about the Scottish game again. Do you know what I mean? Mm-hmm. See, see, when, see, when, see when teams like fucking Honved are stealing your, stealing your like, shining lights, basically, a management up in this country. It's fucking, it's so it's so destroying, man. Honestly. But- also, it's what I think is good about it as well. He's gone to Hungary, right? He's going to learn. It's going to be a new culture. And it's going to be probably a, a different style of football. Eventually, if he comes back, he's, he's, his worth is going to be a lot more because he's been earlier and done that. And man, they, they fucking beat England for nothing. Aye, but Gre- uh, Gre- Gre- remember so, I mean, it was Hung- the fucking Honved that beat England for nothing, mate. I know, but what I'm saying is there must be something about some of the players Aye. that the Hung- Aye. Hungarian Aye. I mean, division. It's a strange one. I mean, I'm just looking at Honved just now. They've only got a capacity of 8,500. Do you know what I mean? It's like... I it's, it's like, yeah, like 8,300 more that will go to the games that they did at Tanadice spot, mate. <laughs> well, <laughs> well, 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 that's the yeah, United season accumulation. Mm-hmm. Fucking fan. Well, it's not really that. Let's be honest, it's not really. But um, it's... Like I say, it's, it's hard to watch because you want to keep your talent in, in this country. Mm-hmm. And... What is it? I mean, is it? It's obviously an ambition thing, man. Because I'm sure then the United would have offered them better terms after the season they had last year. So it's a, yeah. it's a strange one for me. It really is. It, Money it, talks. Uh, yep, it does indeed. Uh, and the man set to replace him apparently in advance talks with Dundee United. Jack Ross. Jack Ross. Yeah, that's a good move for Dundee United. Aye, I think um, it's a good move for both parties. I think it's a good mm-hmm. move for Jack Ross and Oxy. I think. I mean, I've got a really. I've got a, They've got a, a right decent squad there. They've got the some United. good young players in that squad. Aye, they have, and Jack Ross. I, I like Jack Ross. Something aye. about him I've always kind of liked. I don't I know. Think, I, I think I I pulled, the, pulled the trigger too quick on Jack Ross. Aye. 100%, anyway. 100% Gredo. Yeah, 100%, I think everyone yeah. sort of said that. No, Hibs supporters that I speak to said the football was minging. Absolutely minging. They were surprised at how well they did it early on in the season. But mm. aye, you maybe, maybe he was just waiting to... To, to see how it would go, you give him an R transfer window, who knows what would have happened. Um, we've got to talk about the the Rangers deal here uh, with since Rangers will no longer be required to participate in the SPFLs since sponsorship deal following a dispute over the car dealer's involvement. But Neil Doncaster, the chief exec, says... This will remain materially unchanged after a revised deal has been agreed. The Rangers have refused to promote the deal and taken the matter to court, uh, citing the the deal with parts of Hamilton, saying it was a rival. Spokespersons for Rangers said, um, this is a full vindication of our stance throughout the past season and further highlights wide-ranging concerns regarding the corporate governance of the SPFL. Uh, meanwhile, Doncaster's back in saying the new deal protects Cinch's pivotal investment into Scottish football. What have you made of all of this, boys? Well, I can tell you the now that Cinch are probably rubbing their hands together because of this. This has all been see all this talk. It's been they could they could have from... they could not have bought the publicity that this has given them. Aye, they couldn't have bought the publicity. They'll be more than they'll, be, they'll be more than happy, but. Um... <sighs> Can I kind of think phase out this story, Bob? What about you? It just, I mean, I think everyone kind of dangers will say no along about it. I think obviously they've kind of, dug their heels in and they've stood, stood, stood firm on it. And I think it's, I been, just, kind of, it's been vindicated. But well, they, hmm. it's, it's, it, they've Don Castro's coming out going right, he's will never forced to be contractually obliged to stick to that. So Rangers were saying that all along. That's my interpretation of it. So it's all been a big fucking hoo-ha for none. And but, I'm not just but, saying it because I'm a Rangers fan, but I think Rangers are right then. I'd, but why is this? I mean, uh, well, we all know the reason why. But why? the Rangers have had alcohol uh, sponsors in the past when there's been alcohol sponsors in the cup. They've had betting sponsors when there's been betting sponsors elsewhere. So why then suddenly uh, they turn around? And now they're, seem to, they're getting basically money for doing fuck all. But then the, the owner... I mean, I mean obviously no, no, we all know Rangers, Rangers aren't getting paid for it. 
I don't know about that, Chris. I think I don't know what the deal is, but I, I suspect they're getting money out of it in some way. And wait, listen, I I will backtrack absolutely. See if Rangers are getting no money at the cinch deal. Fair fucks, because that you know that means obviously the money's going elsewhere into the SPFL. But if they're getting money from cinch, it's how having their cake and eat it, surely. Right, but what if what if on their terms, cinch have said to say say the money gets revised? I bet there's wee bits and bobs in that. Like, right, we'll give you so much if. So many amount of clubs do well in Europe this season. Just say, for example, Rangers got into Europa League. That could have, that may have added on. So there could be some clause in there that says, right, one of the teams has done this well. It's brought that that many eyes onto the league. We'll bump up money. That could be one of the terms and conditions. Would you be happy then? Would you still be kind of angry at that? Possibly. I mean, I, I see to be honest. Surely, all that it. stuff's got to be looked at. I don't think it will, Grado. I don't. You think, don't think so? I don't think it will come into play at all. I mean, it, it'll be interesting to see what the deal is, but it does just if it is a case of Rangers, you know, getting the getting the cake and eating it, it's 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 not right. It's not right. I would eat, would eat for now, like, but also what you're saying, John, about the lager companies. I think that what's different is the, the chairman owns, uh, you know, the, the the parts of Hamilton. That's his, of course. I, he's going to... I mean, there's a hundred car company. Aye, so I you know I but Gradle's right because the chairman owns the rival. Company when mm. we were having a sponsor, for example, when, no, but when we're having a rival, uh, when we're having like McCoon's Lager or something, whatever, a fucking 32 red and playing the Bet Fred Cup, that's different. Our chairman doesn't own 32 red, mm. so, so there's a total difference there. There's a, there's a conflict of interest when it comes to that's the words conflict of interest. Well, I, 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 listen, I get that, I, abs I absolutely get that, but as long I'm saying as they're not seeing money out of this deal. That's fair in that I case. Don't, how do you how do you know they're seeing money out of it, John? I, I mean, I'm assuming. I'm I'm assuming. I mean, maybe people. No, I think they will. Otherwise, I think. I don't. I don't think they will because right. why in God's name? Would because it's Rangers. I, because it's Rangers. So Simple as that. What? Because well, we because are, it, because we, are, we are the people. I told you, tell them, boy. <laughs> <laughs> because it's rain, because it's dangerous. Because it's one of the two big clubs in Scotland. I cannot see, you know. Do you, do you honestly see Celtic sitting back and allowing that to happen? I, I don't know, Chris. It'll be interesting. I'm sure we'll find out over the next week or see, so. See, see, see how, see yeah, how things that Google angry it. I'm getting. Uh, see Google how, it. see how angry I'm seeing Tony. I really hope we're seeing money with it, man. Stevie, I don't <laughs> give a fuck about it, mate. I honestly don't give a fuck. You about honestly think Celtic would sit back and let that happen? No, no, like, I don't give a fuck. No, I don't give a fuck, Stevie. Rangers will still profit from the new SPFL since Steel, despite being excluded from a revised title sponsorship contract. Yeah. Ibert's club have been in disrepute with the league over the past year with the car retail company. It's a ridiculous. Deal is a main Absolutely, partner. it's fucking ridiculous. It's fucking poetic, oh, man. It's, it's, it's fucking man. ridiculous. It's it's Rangers, but it's you're sitting there smiling because you know exactly how fucking ridiculous it but is. John, how, hey. is it, how is it Rangers' fault? Let me ask that. Surely it's, it's not Rangers. Listen, it's not Rangers' fault, Gregor. Right, right. so, so see, so, right. so, so see, so see if Rangers, Rangers, right, go like that away at the start, right? We're not, we're not doing that, right? And then singe. Go to the fucking Neil Doncaster and that and go, but we still want Rangers to be, we still want to fight because we, we want to be this, we want to be part of this. And Rangers go, but we're not doing it, but we'll take your money if you want, we're not doing it. And yeah. Neil Doncaster's going, we've got to take you to court. And Rangers go, we'll take me to court then, but I'm still not doing it. And since you're going, but we still want to give them money, who's the daft here? It's not Rangers. Mm. Well, it's, it, it's an absolute it's fuck up. up. It's an absolute so, fuck up. So how's it, it's not ridiculous on Rangers part. Listen, they've got Rylan Clark at the helm tweeting about every two minutes, man. They're no one. <laughs> no. But what I'm trying to say... That could have been you, That could have been you. It could have been me. What I'm trying to say here is, but it's just another chapter in fucking cunts that are in power in our country, in football, that are a fucking joke. I, I, I absolutely are, think we're all in so, agreement so with it's, that. So it's no Rangers fault. It's I, can't, one. I cannot believe the other teams are sitting back and... I can't believe that either, Chris. Basically, basically, basically letting either. Rangers fucking fling one up. I know, man. It's 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 mental that we're doing something Scottish football for a change. Still, you know what I mean? It's not your fucking more pulling the strings, man. Oh, that's true. That's true. <laughs> right. Okay. We'll have more on that over the weeks. I'm pretty sure. Uh, Aberdeen. Uh, Calvin Ramsey's off to Liverpool. Four point five million with add-ons. Uh, oh, three tell million. me you both took a drink at the same time. There. <laughs> oh, a victory, a victory drink and a rage <laughs> drink. He's a pure. He's a pure hangover. He's a man. There, Winnie's. That ended up frustrating. That was a bit. Aye, it was a 
It was like at the end, man. It's not your club for a change, man. Aye. Aye. Okay. <laughs> so, <laughs> aye, Calvin well, Ramsey becomes comes the most uh, the biggest transfer for Aberdeen, four point five million from oh, Liverpool. It's, it's, I was going to the school there, right? They pick the wings up, and this guy Barry, who's a big Rangers man, so ah, we just sold Bassett to Liverpool for fucking four point five million. I mean, the other boys going like that. No. I just heard that. And I was like, that's Calvin Ramsey, <laughs> and he's pulled out his phone. Oh, of course. Oh fuck, fuck. <laughs> <laughs> but I mean, that, that obviously good mo- good money for Aberdeen, good young player. But I mean, the worry for me is it's like an odd like we've talked about in this podcast before, an odd young Scottish talent that might go down to England and just get lost, you know. So hold on, I'm kind of a bit slow because the last thing I know, knew about this was they were wanting ten million for him. So it's a done deal, and he's went for four and a half. A done deal. I think it can rise to like six and a half. Yeah, plus add-ons, Grado. I mean, he's no. Get, I, I can't see him breaking into that Liverpool first team, can you? What? What is, is he a left back? Or right, right back? back. Right back. Oh, oh he'll, he'll get. Fuck. He'll get in a heavy Trent, may bother. And you've got Trent in front of you, man. Joe Gomez as well, um, obviously, uh, but he's apparently on his way to Villa. Uh, if rumours will be true, but I, again, you can't. Eighteen year old. He's just going to go into the system down there. He'll maybe get a cup game, you know, and then what happens? Yeah, you you never that. know. You never know. know. Yeah, you never that, know. Let's let's not be fucking typical. We're shy, Scottish, we're shy. You never know, he could go down there, see, to be honest, set the head of light, but there's no I, fucking chance. I don't, I, don't, <laughs> I don't think it's a case of uh, us thinking we're shy. I think this is a case of Liverpool nah. being fucking tremendous, do you know what I mean? So, yeah, but, exactly. Aye, I tell you what, but I think it's good to see players for, out with the old firm going for decent money. Because then yeah. when it comes... You would say that being a don, you could. <laughs> <laughs> no, what I was going to say is it makes our, what, what, what the old fun want for their players become, do you know aye, what I mean? Aye, 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 if, aye, aye, if, if an yeah. Aberdeen player's gone for four and a half, then you know, right, if you want to start talking about such and such player, it starts at this. Aye. Yeah. I've not really seen that the boy. I've not seen, I think, I've only seen me step it, say I'm, I, I can't really comment further on it. I've never really thought anything about him. He's never really caught my eye, if I'm being honest. But, but you know, he's, he's never really eye. been in the he's never really been in the headlines or anything like that. He's never like, mm-hmm. like throughout the season, folk haven't been going, Oh, that's Calvin Ramsey, some player, by the way. You know what I mean? See, like the way, even on a lesser extent, like uh, Doig, uh, sorry, Doig at Hibs and uh, ah, yeah, 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 like yeah, that, yeah. you know, you hear about them in the papers, you hear about clubs being interested in them and all that. Aye, it's just aye. that's just come out of nowhere. I don't mm-hmm. know. I, I, like you say, Stevie, I've not seen a lot of him, so I can't really comment. But fair fucks to Aberdeen, man. Yeah. If, they've, if they've managed to get that money for him, then fair play. Yeah. A guy that's leaving Aberdeen, uh, well, left Aberdeen, as we know, Andy Considine's going to St. Johnson. That's a perfect club for him, isn't it? Uh, oh, he's going to love it there, isn't he? He's going to love it. Big tight team, hoofing a board, the defending. Defend, defend. Just... hold the line, hold the line. line. Exactly, <laughs> aye, yep, yep. 35-year-old ones get a two-year deal. Uh, St. Johnson also signed, remember Dre Wright, who was, they had and then signed for Hibs, they've signed him back then as mm. well. So, right. um, I, Getting I, their I, business and early. <laughs> yeah, mm, they seem to business. be. seem to be mm. getting a lot of players in at Hibs. Um They've just signed a Portuguese boy who they're fucking raving about as well. Um, no, they've not <laughs> signed Jota, no, no. Thank fuck. Thank fuck. Come Talking on. about Jota, Chris, we've not talked about the Cameron Carter Vickers. Obviously, that happened over the last week as well. Happy yep. with that, obviously. Uh, my mate actually delivered the, the tiles to his house, John. Is that right? Um, yes. Big, <laughs> big, big Cameron opened the door and he says, What's happening, Cameron? Are you just getting this place ready for getting it sold? And he just winked at him and says, just wait and you'll see what's happening. There you go. And there you go. That was it. Done and dusted. Is that oh, brutal? No, mate. <laughs> <laughs> no. I, I, I'm, I'm fucking over the moon, man. Over the yeah, moon. Yeah, no, I, 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 like, I quite like the C, CV thing that they did on their Twitter. That was quite smart from Celtic. Yeah, um, do you think Jota will get it done, Chris? I'm hearing that it's they're struggling I to get See if he doesn't sign soon, he's going to get fucking done. <laughs> um, aye, because uh, you think that would have been done as well, but I wonder what's going on there. Have you heard anything? I don't know, man. I think he's, I, I'm not 100%, but I think he's actually still sunning himself all over the fucking world. Well, he's spotted he, in New York wearing a Celtic top, so. 
he played the five a side game or something. He played the five. Where the cell is top. That is pure Kieran Tierney pattern, isn't it? That's a red neck. No, it's a red neck. Where the cell is top. The fucking pure wild into any Celtic boys, man. Oh, aye, they're pure. Um, apparently, uh, aye, you're, Pat- you're, raging, you're raging, aren't you? Because he's playing fives in New York. No, because he's going <laughs> to be right here, he's going to be here to fucking sneak in ahead of Barris, which at the back side all next season. Well, t- I'm talking about. Is, is, is Joe moving to Turkey? Well, talking about Barris, he aye, he could be away to Trabzonspor, isn't he? Um, they're looking aye. at him. Who uh, Barris? Aye, I yeah. thought there was nothing. I, I know. Joshua Barris said the day it's nothing in it, not that. But I think, I think. It might not be Trabs and Spore, but I think he is. I think Bourne is going to be off. Yeah, he's off. All right. Maybe he's just going to get his teeth done. <laughs> well, Ruth's just going to get a haircut. Has he? Has he? <laughs> Ah, wow. wow, there you go. Well, we Ruth coming back next year with a full head of hair. That'll be interesting. Um, he'll, be, he'll, he'll be like Urjota. Pure long hair, not it? <laughs> <laughs> uh, right, okay, on to the daft boys. Would you like to talk about the toddler who embarrassed his parents in B&Q. Would you like to talk about men being cloned or would you like to talk about midwives revealing the worst things they've witnessed in the delivery room when it comes to men? I, do you know what, boys? I think we've spoken enough about, like, dodgy stuff, like, I don't know. Have we? Was it last week? No, actually, forget what I'm saying. Are you, no. ta- are you talking about jobbies and that, Stevie? Aye, so let's aye, not go with the midwife. We've, we've, we've absolutely aye. spoke too much aye, about that, haven't we? Aye, aye. So let's go. Oh, I wanted to talk about the wee boy who took the job in BB and Oh, is that... Did he take a job in B&Q? So, the wee be- he went into one of the display toilets in B&Q and took a job in. That's funny. <laughs> that is good, actually. Uh, See, that's a light-hearted jobby story. It's a, it's a light-hearted story. What else have we got to say about it? Uh, but I just think it's the quote from the mum was uh, specifically, she went in for a washing line, I turned round and he sat on the to- one of the toilets, ran to say, get up, the, the best bit is the father's reaction to this. He le- She left to get wet wipes and came back and he still sat there and the hubby just stood and watched because he didn't know what to do, sitting and watching. What do you do? Like, because once you start, you've got to... You, you can't know, story, John, what, was, what, was, what was the headline for the <laughs> What was that? Was it- what was the headline? Ian Poo! Ian Poo! I was going to say Pian Poo. Ian Poo <laughs> should, have been, should have been. Right, we'll talk about midwives then. Um, this has been revealed from midwives uh, on TikTok. A student midwife said the most annoying things that dads do and say in the delivery room uh, our list included sitting on their phones while the mother is pushing, falling asleep and asking how much longer is it going to take. Gentlemen, you've all had children. <laughs> What stories from the delivery room do you have? Gerard leaving Rangers. What you <laughs> I was pacing, I was pacing about the flare going, oh no man, oh no, oh no. And the one midwife is going, she's fine, she'll be all right. Fucking <laughs> 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 Gerard's gone to her. <laughs> she'll be fine, she'll be fine. <laughs> Chris, when Keen arrived? I fell asleep. Did you yeah. fall asleep? Uh, I know even that. See how like they give them the mad exercise ball and the mat and all that to kind of move them on with the with the the labour. I lay down in the mat, put on extenders on the telly, and fucking fell asleep. Like bearing <laughs> bearing in mind it was Christmas Eve, Keen was born on Christmas Day. Oh wow, really? Yeah, right, right, right. so Christmas was, Day. Aye, man. So it was like oh. it, the the I, I was up the night before Christmas Eve. It was a full twenty seven hours or something like that. My head was hanging off. And I just thought, I'll lie down and I'll rest my eyes for five minutes. Out for the count, man. A good fucking four hours or something I was out for. You didn't oh. miss the birth though, Chris, no? No, no, no. 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 Right, okay. Uh, Stephen, any stories from Leo and Leah? Uh, it was long. Both of them were pretty long. Leah was really long. Uh, I think, was it Leah or Leo? I read a cracking book, man. That, now, the film I got made, Bradley Cooper was in it, American Sniper. Oh, yeah, fucking, yeah. I read that book, man. That was brilliant. Uh, <laughs> the, the full book? Aye. <laughs> what the hell? I can, boys, boys, I can read like fuck when I start, right? I don't put the things down when I start, right? But no, I read that. Uh, then the wee midwife we had for Leo, like, Leila, uh, Nicola was not really a lot. She just, it came really quick, man, eventually, man. But then it was like the wee woman was deep. She couldn't really hear what Nicola was saying. Nicola was like, it's coming, it's coming. And she's like, right, you okay? She couldn't really fucking hear what she was saying. But apart from that, she went away, came back, then the rain was born, and I was like, just hodding her hodding and all that. 
It's fine. <laughs> it's fine. <laughs> it's fine. <laughs> she done so, brilliant, man. You, you, fucking... you, John, you had then? She's uh, standing no, behind I... the laptop, isn't she, Stevie? <laughs> <laughs> both, both, both minds were uh, through the sunroof, so it was just, you know, we operation and all that. But I, I do mm-hmm. remember, like, uh, um, Lady Marmalade was playing uh, in the the waiting room, uh, well, in the delivery room when it was playing. I was like, that's what fucking got us here in the first place. Oh, um, oh, <laughs> uh, so this week on Football Daft Focus, if you've got a tale of the delivery room, uh, give us, hit us up, Football Daft Pod, drop us a DM on there. We'll, we'd love to hear that next week. Uh, but on Football Daft Focus this week, we're going to return to one of our friends, a friend of the show, Ewan Cameron is going to come on. He's been on a Twitter tirade over the last couple of days, weeks, about Scotland, and he wants to get it off his chest. So we're going to be speaking to Ewan very, very soon. On the big question, I know you need to set an argument. What is the coldest football stadium in Scotland? Uh, we'll get into that in a bit. Gredo's got three riddles. Um, yeah. Aye, oh, thanks to everybody who sent some. Set. They've been really, really up, up their game. You were, looking, you were looking for that grace. So every, every message, every message they go, please do not mention, do, please do not slag this. I mean, what have you been fucking brutal the last couple of weeks? Have you been reading them out? Uh-huh. This is shite. <laughs> we're going to talk moments of the week and we're going to get our fix of football as we go soccer daft and look at the MLS. Yo, man. <laughs> right, gentlemen. All men strive for gold in their life, do they know? Gold medals, watches, gold, everything. However, there's a certain type of man that likes to go the extra mile. He walks with the confidence of an eagle and he giggles in the face of danger. He's big, he's hairless, he's a big winning machine. That's and the when opposite he, of me. When he, when he unzips his pants, what does he see? Platinum. That's right. Manscaped would like to introduce to you the best and biggest ultimate hygiene bundle yet. The Platinum Package 4.0. Manscaped, we all know they're the leader in below the waist grooming. Now, trust them with the whole shebang. Join the 4 million men, that's including us, sitting here today. We all trust Manscaped, and we all go to manscaped.com forward slash daft, and we get 20% off and free shipping. So, Manscaped boys, have we been manscaping this weekend? Is Have we been doing the thing? I did. I've got one that I use... On my Davina McCall's, and I've got one I use in my boat race, my Chevy Chase. So I used one in my Chevy Chase the other day. Right. Uh, Joel? <laughs> I have took myself down to, down to the wood, Gredo. Right, nice to hear. Mm. Down nice to, to hear. the John? wood. John? Uh, well, I'm going on holiday next week, so I am going to be doing a proper good manscape session to get me looking good and holiday ready. Right, well... Troops, if he's listening in, he's wanting to be part of the, the gang. Uh, well, they've designed this package to fully align your entire hygiene routine with elite products. You're going to get the Lawnmower 4.0 trimmer, the Weed Whacker Ear and Nose trimmer, the body wash, the shampoo and conditioner. You're getting deodorant in here. You're getting the Crop Preserver Anti Chafing Body Odorant. You're getting the Ball Spray Toner. You're getting the Boxers. You're getting the Shed Travel Bag. Everything you need to hold your goods while you're traveling. The weed whacker and the ear trimmer, they've both got uh, safe shit in them so that it doesn't kind of tear you up your delicate parts and holes. It's waterproof as well. You can upgrade your shower routine with a body wash and the shampoo and conditioner. Your skin is going to be feeling hydrated as well as your hair. You're going to be smelling tremendous. And don't forget the aluminium free ultimate premium deodorant for that cologne quality scent on the go. We've all tried this and they we're really, really happy with, his, with the results. So, uh, They've even threw in two, two free gifts this year. The uh, the boxers, as I've said before, the travel bag as well. Bring your comfort in boxers to another level. Uh, cover yourself all bases from head to toe. It's the best for your shebang. Now, get 20% off and free shipping with the code daft at manscaped.com. 20% off now. Don't you dare give up this offer. It's fantastic. It's time you enjoy the finer things in life. Get yourself a platinum package for your platinum package. Uh, it's time for Football Daft Focus as we get into the big talking points of Scottish football. It's been a turbulent couple of weeks for the national side. A shortened performance in the World Cup qualifier against Ukraine was followed by a pretty confident display against Armenia. Then we had the absolute horror show in Ireland before another victory against nine-man Armenia the other night there. 
On to assess those performances and stick in his own oar from the big Saturday football show and Ewan from Ewan and Cat, friend of the show. It is, of course, Ewan Cameron. How are you, Ewan? Thank you, thank you. Nice to see you, Stephen. Nice to see you, Grado. Nice to see you. Lovely to, have, to see you. Good to have you on, mate. Cheers, bud. Johnny Mac, thank you. Lovely introduction, that. Uh, mm-hmm. Scotland were shite in the last couple of weeks. What more do you want me to say? <laughs> right, OK. Where are, you, where are you sitting with Steve Clark? Because you went in a tirade after the Ireland games, Ewan. Is, is, does he go or does he stay? I would have given him... I would have got rid of him after the, um, the Ukraine game. That's how I mean. I was just angry. I was really upset with that performance. Not only was I angry and upset with that performance, but it was an opportunity miss like we've never had before. We'd drawn England in a World Cup group with Iran and the United States. What an incentive that was. We also had the chance of a Battle of Britain game against Wales and Cardiff. We turned up against the Ukraine and something was fundamentally wrong. And I thought we had it wrong from the get go the setup, the tactics. I think we played players who were clearly not fit. Um, Lyndon Dykes, he had a huge strapping on his thigh. And we said before the game, something's no right with him. We've got players 100% ready for this game. And if you're even just 90% ready, then you shouldn't be playing. Billy Gilmore was off the pace. He hadn't been playing for Norwich recently. He'd been carrying an injury as well leading up to the game. Aaron Hickey looked like a fish out of water. Um, out of position. I think the back three didn't really work, and I think we got overrun in midfield, and it took forever for Steve Clark to change it. And the problem with Steve Clark, like he was at Kilmarnock, and although he was good at Kilmarnock and he was successful at Kilmarnock, he's very arrogant, he's very stuck in his ways, and he doesn't like to change things. He doesn't like he doesn't like to be proved wrong, and it's up to him to go and prove people wrong, like the fans and the media. And we've all got an opinion on him and he doesn't like that. And he gets very prickly when you have a pop at him or the players. And I just think after the Ukraine game, because he got it so wrong on so many questions that were asked of him that night, I think he should have gone. I really do, because I'm sickened that we're not going to be at the World Cup. I mean, we're playing England in the World Cup, Iran, the USA. That's what our group would have been. And I think we'd have got out that group. And I, I was watching the game the other night there in the playoffs in Doha. And it was um, Australia versus Peru. And they were in the actual stadium where Scotland would be playing three of their games had they got there. The stadium was stunning. The, the pitch was immaculate. And it just made it worse for me that I was looking at a pitch in a stadium that we really should have been at. Because I think if we beat the UK, I think we beat Wales. They carried a lot of luck. I don't think they were particularly great. I think we beat them. And that would have given us a great chance in uh, Qatar to get out that group. So... I think that's why I was so angry with Steve Clark that it was such a big opportunity and miss that he needed to go for that because we should be at that World Cup. And he didn't take us there. And that's, that's down to him. Can I ask a question, can I ask a question you and see when, see when, you, when you tweeted all that stuff, what was it? I never actually saw it yet, but what was the reaction for people on Twitter when you, you were tweeting that you wanted Clark to go? I, I put forward 21 games. The last 21 games that we had played um, when, when you actually look at it, even like the, the scraping of the 1-0 win against Moldova, the, the 1-0 victory against Luxembourg, those sorts of results, we weren't really great in those games. The performances weren't that good either. Um, but we got the result. And I know if you're winning, then you jump on the bandwagon and you enjoy the ride because you're on a five-beaten game. Un, you're on, unbeaten over five games, six games, seven games, eight games. All looks great on paper, but when you actually look at the games individually... They weren't any great. I mean, we beat Denmark 2-0 at Hamden, but they turned up, had already qualified. They were trying at new players. They weren't really <laughs> up for it. We were, and we won 2-0. But the game previous to that in Denmark, it was 2-0 going on 6-0. And again, Stevie Clark, because of his reluctance and his arrogance and his system and his team selection, his tactics, he didn't change it that night until too late. And by that time, we are 2-0 down and we were never really in the game. So when you actually analyse individual games, even though we won those games, the performances haven't been that great, but we've got away with it by winning the game. And yeah, you could pick out Austria. But again, when you look at stats and the facts of that game, Austria battered us. And we came away with a a 1-0 win through a a dodgy penalty that um, Shea Adams had won for us. So I think overall, it's been great and we've enjoyed it. But I think when you analyse it, individual games... 
I don't think Steve Clark's been that great for us. I think we have got to the position we got in spite of Steve Clark. I think so we... it's, not off, it's not off Nasiris, but it's really fucking hard to disagree with everything you've said. Oh, you see. wow, wow. No. <laughs> I think you're bang on, see, even with the stuff, because you're right, he doesn't like to indulge with the, with the press, didn't he? No, he doesn't like... He's, ar- he's arrogant. Really prickly. He's, he's, he's uh, arrogant. He's um, very, very arrogant. I, mean, nah. I, I even saw oh, it. Yes, yes, the Rangers boys waiting in now. No, I'm <laughs> no, just saying... No, this is what I said earlier. Sorry, I, I even saw go. Tom English tweet something and his boy get, get torn in was calling him a fucking yeah. idiot or something like that as well. Mm. So, but there's... It's... I think that's the... What John, what I said to you before we started the show today, yeah. I think there is, there is a certain element of that that now what you said there, there's the Rangers boys getting torn in, right? It's no secret that there's no love lost with Rangers fans and Steve Clark. There's no love lost at the moment with a lot of Rangers fans and a lot of Scotland fans. There's a, there's a fraction, there's a divide there, right, that's no nice, right? But that doesn't take away from the fact what you and saying there, right, all right, the guy goes to the Euros, we all jumped on the bandwagon, we all loved it, myself included, it was great. But see what we've done at the Euros, we've done exactly the same what we've done there with two games to go to qualify for the World Cup, we fucking bottled it. We got a draw. Yeah. We got a draw against England. It was on a plate for us. Our first game was at home, was at Hamden yeah. against Czech Republic. We get stage fright, we bottled it. Clark, again, is lack of tactical fucking noose at times during a game yes. to change it is, is so apparent, right? And then when it yeah. comes to the World Cup qualifiers, You've got Ukraine, right? You beat them, you then play Wales, like you're saying. To go to a World Cup, two games, I think, all right, it goes to the Euros, but we were fucking pissed at the Euros apart from one game, right? One well, I mean, game I mean, where I mean, we battled. Stephen, Stephen, I think when you analyse getting to the Euros, it was Alex McLeish who got to the playoffs in the first place to give us that mm-hmm. chance to get to yep. the Euros. Now, look mm-hmm. at the games that, that Steve was in charge of. Israel, in the first of those playoff games, it was nil-nil at Hamden after 120 minutes, and Israel were the better side, and we went through on penalties at home mm-hmm. to mm-hmm. Israel. Think about that. Mm-hmm. Yeah, we then go to Serbia. I, we go to I, Serbia, and again, we take the lead to Ryan Christie. Good goal. Serbia were the better team on the night. I thought we were putting a really good defensive battling performance, and we went to nick it, and we nearly nicked it. Serbia then go and score a late equaliser in the 91st minute with a header, which on reflection, deserved to get the equaliser. Second half, if it's not for Craig Gord, sorry, for David Marshall and goal, we lose that game in extra time. We then go to penalties, and it's just luck at the end of the day when it comes to penalties. So we struggled against Israel, went through on penalties. We put in a battling defensive display away at Serbia, and we're 1-0 up, and they peg us back, and then we eventually go through on penalties. We then get to Euros, and in some ways it's like a home tournament for us. We've got three games at home, Yes, I know we're at Wembley, we're at London, but it's still in the UK. We've not got much travelling to do. We can stay in our camp where we're based and get ready for the game. It was all two a play for us. It was all I know two us. games at Hamden. Two mm-hmm. games at Hamden we had, and we bottled it in both games. We were awful in that opening mm-hmm. game. Again, the Czech Republic, yeah. it was two going on four, five, six. It was awful. We then got to England, mm-hmm. and because it's England, we put in a brilliant defensive battling display, and we get a brilliant nil-nil draw. That really should have set us up for a grandstand finish at home, at Hamden, against Croatia, and, a, and we bottled it again. They, we had Modric in the middle of the park, on his own, ran mm-hmm. the show. I know yeah, he's yeah. a world-class player. He's just won the, the Champions League with Real Madrid. I get that. But my God, he ran that show and mm-hmm. they made us look ordinary at home. We didn't take advantage of being at home and we got thumped 3-1. And again, it was 3-1, easy, comfortable. And we went out in, in a whimper. And I'm thinking... What? Was it one goal at the Euros scored? Aye. Yeah. One but, goal, aye. And I, I mean, you, see when you say it like that, and you know, a lot of Scottish fans, I think they're happy to accept mediocrity. To, I mean, like say Ewan, I bet you there was folks saying to him, Oh, but who else is going to be the manager? Who else is going to be yeah, the manager? Get I hate that. that mindset. Because it's like, we, we were talking, right? We, you and we've been talking about Tam Colt's gone abroad, right? Toe was kind of, Toe, did you know, say, oh, he's gone abroad, we'll no see him again. Calvin Ramsey could do it at Liverpool. He's going away into the world. Everybody, there's, I see that mindset. Do you get what, do you get what I'm coming from? I know, I know you mean. When, 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 I, when I put forward the case as to why Steve Clark should go, a lot of people says, well, who do we get in? That's not the point. The point is, is Steve Clark the right man to take Scotland forward? I firmly believe that this Scotland squad that we've got right now is a brilliant squad with depths, with options. 
I don't like the back three. I don't like the back five. We're uncomfortable to watch. And we always seem to be overrunning midfield. McTominay is never a centre-back. Oh, and and, and McTominay is never a centre-back in a million years. He should never be uh, at centre-back. And I don't know why he he, he persists with that. He's got to stop going with his back five. And if he does want to go with the back five, and I think we look better when Tierney's in there. I was going to to say, you. I think think for for me, you know, personally, is that when Tierney's in that, Back five. That's when the system works. When you've got Tierney that's when it works. Half. But the thing, but then no, it's but like he needs to change it. He needs to go four, uh, four, yeah. three, three. Yeah. If, you know, but he's or, scared or, or, to do that, or he's too arrogant. Yeah, I, I, again, I think he's too arrogant. He sh- if you showed that, I mean, I, I mean, for me, when he put in uh, Liam Cooper instead of um, Scott McKenna for that game against the Ukraine, I was gobsmacked at that because. McKenna's been outstanding for Nottingham Forest. Yeah. He's on a high. He's just got promoted to the Premier League, having a brilliant season with Forest. He should have started that game. But then mm. again, without Tierney, the back five doesn't work for me. I think John's right. When you've got Tierney in that back five, it works better it when works he's in it because he gives Scotland another option and, and piling forward with Robertson on the outside of him. But when he's not there, we just look awful. And I don't think that Steve Clark. I, I think he's too arrogant to change it and to change the tactics up, even if Tierney's not there or a certain player's not there to, to make it work. I would go a 4 2 3 1 personally. I'd have Gilmore and McTominay sitting in there, maybe, and then maybe um, uh, Christie supporting Shea Adams and probably a McGinn or a McGregor, McTominay or drop McTominay, McGregor and um, Gilmore. But I, we've got options to play that system. Um, and have one of the centre backs, one of the sitting midfielders dropping in, and have the full backs forming for a bit like Liverpool, like with, with Fabinho. I know yeah. we're not Van Dijk, and I know we're not um, Kanate or Matip, and I, but I do think we've got the players who work a four-two-three-one formation. Yeah. It's the best Scotland team we've had in a long time, man. It's oh, easy, best. and and we've also got, and we've got options on the bench as well, Stephen, mm. and that Definitely. that's what really frustrates me. We've think got the options big... on the bench, and we've got a really good squad, and I don't think Steve Clark's getting the best out of that team or no, allowing no. the players to be the players that they actually are. You look at Shea Adams for Southampton; he's brilliant, but it, the, the way the Scotland setup is, it doesn't suit Shea Adams mm. because he's isolated. He needs someone around him. He's a, yeah. he's a mm-hmm. he players at buzzes right. about. He's got nobody alongside him, and he gets isolated a lot. I, of the time I think that's you can't really get him into the game. The problem with Scotland is the you like say you and they don't have that striking option. I think Shea Adams is a great find, a great player. His hold up player is ex- I think his hold up play is absolutely exceptional. But they yeah. don't have a, a guy that's probably Lyndon Dykes have tried obviously up with him. He's not a level. I don't think that Shea Adams is at really. And I think you, that's the one big fault with Scotland at the moment is finding that striker. You know. Mm-hmm. Can, oh, can Scott I can ask, Wright. Scott, you, Scott Wright. Scott Wright. Yeah. Oh. Can I, I'm, I'm just going to go around the lot of you, right? You've asked me my opinion on Steve Clark, and I and I would have changed him after the Ukraine game. Would you change him, John Mack? No. Would you change no. him, Stephen Ferdinand? Yep. Grado, would you change him? I would. Toll? I wouldn't. And the reason, the reason why I wouldn't is because I think there, there's a nucleus there, and I think he's a good enough manager to eventually get them going. And I think they all... Oh, the squad are kind of singing off the same hymn sheet as him. I think the squad are, are in support of him as well. We'll see if it comes to a point where the squad don't want to be, don't want him there, and he's not doing what they're maybe, they're maybe wanting to do. Then, and I know he's the manager and he's the one that he eventually, like he's the the bottom line, he's the one that, that decides what happens. But yeah. If you're if you've not got that dressing room behind you, then it's a it's a septic atmosphere you know so as, as long as they're as long as they're supporting him then I would keep him in there I think he's got something definitely I mean you don't you don't do what he done with Uh and if you're not a talented manager you know told 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 do you know do you know what we probably need a plastic pitch at Hamden <laughs> he's, he's, he's very good on a plastic pitch but do you know what the question that's being asked of Steve Clark is the same question that's being asked of Gareth Southgate down south after a shocking Nations League campaign and England fans and pundits and media are now looking at Gareth Southgate and thinking hold on a minute we keep banging on about how he got to a World Cup semi-final and he got to a Euros and now they're going oh but yeah but he only beat Panama, Tunisia, Colombia and Sweden 
to get to a World Cup semi-final. Now they're realising that even Scotland could possibly go to a World Cup semi-final in 2018. So the same questions have been asked of Steve Clark, have been asked of, of uh, Gareth Southgate. Is it we've carried a wee bit of luck in spite of the manager to get where we are? Time will tell. And I hope he proves me wrong and proves Gradle wrong and, pr and proves Stephen Purden wrong. But I have a funny feeling that I'll be back on the show in uh, less than a year because I think Clark won't last another year. You will I agree, see. I agree 100%. We will see. Maybe we could get Gareth Southgate as the manager <clears throat> if Steve Clark goes. Nah, by, by the way, I hope he stays England manager because they're never winning it with him as manager. No, they're not. They're not, which is great no. news for everyone. Ewan, thank you so much for <laughs> coming on um, as ever. Um, yeah. We'll, we'll definitely hopefully not speak to you in a year's time and uh, hopefully steve clark scotland do well and we we flourish but we will wait and can see. i can i not talk about Eintracht frankfurt that was a good night that football daft big question <laughs> I'm not too sure why I got into this argument, but this broke out in my work. We found ourselves arguing about what is the coldest stadium in Scotland. I am 100% convinced that Broadwood is the coldest stadium in Scotland. Despite it not being on the coast, despite it not being up north, Broadwood for me is the coldest stadium I've ever been in. And I've been in Petaudry, I've been in Inverness, I've been in Gayfield, I've been all over the place. And I'm convinced Broadwood's the coldest in Scotland. However, are you boys? No. No. There are, there are two stadiums that I've been in where I thought my fingers were going to fucking fall off. Right. One was Petaudry and the other one was Phil's Park. Right. Phil's Park. Park. Shire. I, 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 the East of Lynch. Shire. Mm -hmm. It was so fucking cold and it's completely enclosed as well. So it, it baffles me how it was so cold, but, but fuck. Every single time I was there, I felt I was even in the summer. It was freezing. It was weird. <laughs> the the coldest I've ever felt was we were filming on a Saturday and I finished early and I went to Dumbarton Stadium to watch Rangers. We were it was the dark days <laughs> and we played Dumbarton and it was fucking freezing. It was freezing. It wasn't a nice stadium. It was horrible. horrible. Okay, one. Yeah. Air United in February. Playing Rangers in the Scottish Cup in the, you know, open, nay, nay roof, uh, yeah, was, yeah. The, 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 the terrace, yeah. the standing uh, terrace, yeah. and it was snowing and it was oh. fucking brutal. And I'm telling you, it was, it was, it was, it was, it was sere. You know that way it was actually sere. <laughs> I, I know exactly what you mean, mate. What month was that in February? <laughs> <laughs> February? February. And, but what? I remember about that game. It was Tav's first game as a captain. I remember that. There you go. Um, well, we put out to the listeners, um, and they are come, they came in <laughs> thick and fast. A real easy question this week. What is the coldest stadium in Scotland? George says, Dumbarton agrees with Stephen. Uh, when the wind comes off the water, especially at winter, the wind swirls, and it's not great watching goalkeepers take goal kicks down there. Horrible, man. Horrible. Douglas <laughs> says, Hannah Park, home of Shots Bon Accord. Froze at a game in May. Oh no, she froze at a game in May. Oh no, oh, I'm like. It's <laughs> Hannah Park to name the stadium, Grado. <laughs> Douglas at <it> early. <laughs> oh, sorry. Sorry, Douglas. <laughs> uh, P. Oh, yo, you go to. Uh, P. Mike B says Belsley and Fraserburgh for, oh. for non top weeks. And Gayfield and our growth for the bigger clubs. Gayfield's freezing as well. I, 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 I think I don't think Arbroath like that talk. I think they always see when you, you say about how free I think they mo they kinda moan when 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 and let see when the pundits say and you're up to Arbroath and it's free. I don't think they like it. What does Captain Ricky Will uh, little say about it? Go and ask him. Go and ask him, do you think go and ask Ricky if Arbroath is the coldest stadium? Why don't, why don't we get your man back on the commentator? Hey, what's his name? Fermer. We'll get Fermer in this back on. Aye, we'll get him back uh, on. Kerry, I'll, just, I'll tell you something. I don't, I don't like get being called called up here, eh? <laughs> I mean, it's fucking, it's, it's nice and warm up here. You can dip your toes in the fucking water. <laughs> <laughs> you can taps off. Uh, Kerry's got in touch, says, 
Simply for Park. It is for Park. It's really. Cool. I've been a few times, man, but I haven't really noticed that. I've always been a bit heavy, baby, and all that going, but I can't. I've really noticed it's been mm. cool, to be honest. It's good. It's good. It's mostly empty when I go there, obviously. Uh, Rab, no argument. <laughs> Cowden Beath was there for a Scottish Cup game just before COVID. Coldest game ever. I caught Cowden Beath's a badge in as well. Tom says Broadwood seems to have its own Arctic I'm micro glad. climate. I'm glad someone agrees. Glad but John Addy, I remember as a wee boy going to watch Clyde versus Rangers 95 96. Guys, I was playing. I mean, was Ch- did Chella Nicholas play for Clyde? He did. I think Ch- I don't know if he was playing then, but was he? Would he have still been playing 95, 96? Hey, well, he probably would have been, actually. Aye. Aye. I remember Aye. that game. And as a wee boy, I remember being freezing. So there's another one for... No, no, for there's, a, there, there's, there's another one for memory lane. <laughs> <laughs> as I delve into my... Memoirs. <laughs> <laughs> it's actually, actually chapter 15 of On the Ropes. <laughs> 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 you know what that's still what, what, what our autobiographies are going to be called we, we uh, named each other like, you're, you're on the ropes what's yours Stevie Bob's your uncle <laughs> <laughs> what's yours still what would mine be uh, the biggest uh, small uh, man in Scotland what? Tall Tales Tale of Tolls uh, oh Tall Tales is good Tall Tales that, that is good Tall Tall Tales but what about Total Tall Tales Total Tall Tales, tall, tall tales. <laughs> John what would yours be I don't, I don't, I'm, yeah. I'm not... I've got to it, total, total, total tales. Yeah. Total, total, total tales. <laughs> Try saying that three times here, Bevy, and you. Total, total tales. Right. I can't say, say it once, over. <laughs> jo- John's is, I own a big D. I own a big D. I do own a big D. I, but I've not talked about this yet. I uh, got my big D for the Ken McAllister stand this week. I am now proud sponsor of the D on the gable end of the south stand at Falkirk. Uh, got my picture of Alex Totten and my big D this week. So that's the first thing you put your hands on a big D in it, John. It is. It is. <laughs> uh, back to the court. Back, back to the listeners' responses. John says, "Easy, I both." <laughs> Just for the sheer possibility of supporters getting slapped by the sea and players kicking the ball into the water. Uh, Robert says Broadwood comfortably. Peggy yes. says Petaudry. One word to answer. Mm-hmm. Ross says Falkirk before third stand was built. Not been in it since. Levy has to go up there too. Would you know about Falkirk, John? Falkirk is cold. Uh, because you've got, obviously, we've got only three stands, as you know. Because there's so much space uh, in between all the people as well. Exactly. exactly. <laughs> uh, Colin's fucking savage, though, man. Another savage. one for Gayfield from Colin. He was there when Colin Steen made his debut for Rangers, scoring a hat trick in it. Oh, freezing. Wow. Gregor says Broadwood, or as it's known, Ice Station Zebra. What does that mean? That's, <laughs> a, that's an old film. Why is it? Is that a film? Yeah. Oh, that Chris says Cowden and Beath are a broth. Des has got in touch. He says, always found it to be a broth with Montrose. And uh, Stephen, from a personal experience, a broth, air, or Clyde. Don't know why Clyde is it's not next to water, but it's fucking Baltic, yes. That's what you said. John, that's what you said. That, that's a bit weird, isn't it? Why is it the same Because it's on the hill. It's on the big hill. You know, oh. you've got... See, I, I, take my, I used to take my wee boy there because he used to play. Like, Aye. Clyde and it was... I never noticed it. Never noticed I done a penalty never. shoot. I done a celebrity penalty shoot last summer and it was pure roasting. Did you hit yeah, the mud in the middle? Penalty straight to the goalie. <laughs> yeah, asked for that, Graham. Graham, I, know, that's 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 so I had to spin ten. I had to spin room ten times, run the ball, my horn on the ball, then kick the ball. So it was fucking made up my corner flag. That probably means you had to spin room once, fuck the ball, and then it came up. <laughs> What that means is he didn't actually have to do it. He just done it for a buzz and then went to kick the ball. I would love it if there's another fucking Twitcher or something or TikTok or something listening to this one. Did he fuck? <laughs> <laughs> and let's leave it with Stephen who says, next question, what's the warmest? We'll have to do that next week. Fucking Seville's. Aye, yeah, 100%. Seville. Uh, 100%, <laughs> man. <laughs> It's time for Soccer Daft! Now, guys, as we're devoid of football over the next few weeks, we're turning our attention to America as Football Daft goes Soccer Daft. Uh, we've all decided to follow an MLS team. Um, now, should we do this section in American accents? I feel we should. No! No! 
Remember, I had to do that. Remember, Rab done it for a full episode of Wrestling Daft. For Wrestling Daft. But I think we're a section grade, though. It might be alright. Should we do it? Should we try it on there? Yes. I like it. I think that should be it. Yeah. Go slow. <laughs> right. So, guys, uh, welcome to Soccer Death. Uh, so, g- <laughs> we've all decided to follow an MLS team this week, uh, and I'm going to go for New York City because I'm a Falker supporter, dudes. I want to glory <laughs> hunt, you know? So, I'm going to go for uh, New York City. I'm uh, supporting New York City. Uh, Chris, you're going for Austin FC. Steven has LAFC. And Grado, you went for Orlando City, haven't you, dude? Right on, dude. Of course I have. Come on, bro. Yeah. <laughs> now, Grado, big result for Orlando last night as they played out a 1-1 one one draw yeah. away to New England after yeah. an equalizer from center half Robin Jensen after a worldy from New England's Charles Gill. What did you make of the game, Grito? Yeah, I saw that goal, man. When it went tap in, I couldn't believe my eyes, man. Shit. But, you know, we uh, we went down 1-0 at 22 minutes from Carlos Gill, but we equalized in the 35th minute, and we failed to fucking... We failed to capitalize, but we never did, but we never do. Yeah, it, it, great result, though, Grito. Great result. Now, yes. let's move on to, to Steven. Due to the international break, uh, there's been few and far between games for your team. Steven. Yeah, 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 bro. Uh, yeah. You play the, the Seattle Sounders. Uh, they're coming up. Uh, yeah, we're, we're and, playing them on this Saturday, 18th of June, man. But the Sounders, I mean, they're they're going for like three wins on the bounce. They're like three home wins in the bounce. So it's going to be quite a difficult place to go. But I feel after the San Jose result, we could really pull through this game, yeah. Yeah, yeah, they're seventh in the Western Conference, so you're, you know yeah. there's a good chance LA flying at the moment, top of that Western yeah. Conference. Um, yeah, Chris, Austin play this <laughs> Sunday, and they're away to Montreal, who currently oh. sit third in the Eastern Conference. They're oh, only dude, that's gonna be tight. Shit, you City. going, bro? Uh, you know something, brothers? <laughs> when when we go over there, we're going to Canada, bro. We're going there. We're going to see those Montreal Impact, brother. And you know something, brother? Austin have got exactly what it takes to get the result of you, bro. I can't wait to see Austin take a few goals. Perhaps a couple from the PK spot, brother. You know, let's get there. Let's go. Come on, Austin. It's time to go. Oh, bro. yeah, brother. I know what you're saying there. It finally, should be an easy win for the mighty New York City at home to Colorado, who currently linguish mid-table in the Western Conference. Though the big news is the Ronnie roars no more as he's departed, the big Judas that he is. He's off the standard Liège in Belgium. Big Whoa, hopes so for dude, Nick you Cushing. okay, man? You okay? Oh, I'm gutted, man. But Nick Cushing <laughs> is a good appointment. He used to manage Man City Woman. And now he's Ooh. been appointed. He was Ronnie's assistant. So hopefully he'll keep the roar going. Anyway, there's more big <laughs> MLS news because we just signed a $2.5 billion deal with Apple TV for the next 10 years. Calabunga, dudes. You know why that is, dude? You know why that is? Because the mighty LAFC have signed Giorgio Chiellini from Serie A. Former Whoa. Juventus defender has signed. So obviously... So Apple are going to want to buy the rights to watch him oh. defend the LA's backline. Yeah, absolutely. You know something, yeah. brothers? That guy is a World Cup winner, bro. And we yeah, can, once we get these guys into the MLS, it's going straight to the moon. Straight yeah. to the moon. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, it's all happening in the MLS right now. And thanks to you all for getting in touch. And thanks to y'all. <laughs> And letting us know your MLS teams. Clark is going for the Portland Timbers just because they cut a log. <laughs> Mark <laughs> says the New England Revolution are nearest to Boston and cheers. You know, cheers with Sam and the guys. Great show, bro. Yeah, Where everybody knows Mark, your name. Everyone knows your name down there, dude. Uh, Don DJ says he's going for Philadelphia Union because of the Italian stallion Rocky Balboa. Whoa. What's Andy going for, dude? <laughs> <laughs> Andy's going for Philadelphia Union. Stumbled on him a few years ago in football manager and stayed for three seasons. Good on you, Andy. Hey, Titch just said he's going to Canada next week for his son's therapy. So I'm going for Toronto <laughs> FC. Good luck with that, bro. 
KR says Columbus Crew, brother. <laughs> <laughs> Well, Gary, he's going for uh, Houston because WrestleMania 25, he went to that shit. And now he's going to follow the Houston Dynamo because he went to WrestleMania, brother. <laughs> Andrew, Andrew's going for Philadelphia. That's a popular choice this week, boys. Yeah. Uh, he says he picked it due to my favorite show. It's Always Sunny in Philadelphia starring Danny DeVito. Am I right, Danny DeVito? Yeah, yeah you're right yeah, there, absolutely. bro. Yeah, yeah, yeah. But, but you know something? Another reason why you should pick Philadelphia, bro, is because they make such a beautiful cream cheese. <laughs> but Andrew always says he was pleased to see Bedoya was in their squad. He used to play for the Glasgow Rangers. Bedoya, you know Bedoya? But yeah. he says, wonder if people in Philadelphia know about Derry's Walls. Who's Derry? I don't know. Who is it? <laughs> Who is Derry? Who is Derry? <laughs> As for when to see DC United hey. ages ago, he was absolutely <laughs> steaming. And How he just, many walls? <laughs> I just he just followed the drinks boy with the big beer pack finger boot. Made some pals that day back in 2011. What a oh, day. that's so cool! That's so cool. Look, awesome. Esper sent us a picture. Look at that. That's him in the Dundee United top. Who Dundee? And then he's got a picture of a man in a kill, and a man with a shield. Dude, that that's ain't no kill. That's a skirt, goddammit. Oh, goddammit. That's a skirt. Anyway, that's soccer death for this week. Please get in touch. Let us know who you're supporting in the MLS, because we'll be talking like this for the next couple of weeks, because there's fuck all football on in Scotland. Absolutely. And you know something? What you gonna do when the MLS comes calling for you? Now time for Gredos Free Riddles on Football Day. Welcome to the Riddles in Football Day. Let's get riddle with Gredo. <laughs> riddle this, riddle me that. <laughs> Who's uh, afraid of the big bad bat? And John, let's go for the scores on the boards. What we sitting at, uh, currently? Scores on the boards. Let's go back to last week's riddle. We asked you this: uh, Disciples Dogfoot has house to rent. Disciples Dogfoot has house to rent. Chris, you got it. Can't remember. You can't remember. Disciples <laughs> Dogfoot has house to rent. Peter Paul Let. Yeah, that's right. Peter, Peter Paul. Paul uh, uh, first in this week. I'm glad to say after last week. We asked for him. He's back. Our pal Dino got yeah, it. Hey, buddy. Welcome back, buddy. Dino. 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 So Dino is up to nine points as a result of that, which leaves the score as follows. Mark one, two, one. Kean uh, is on one. Uh, Ali McDonald one. Pat Palprick one. Declan Ramage one. Ian Mika one. Jack one, Sheep FM two, John Mitchell two, producer Ryan two, Nicko Purden two, Ryan Dunbar three, Ali Dixon three, Albert Legend four, Dean is on nine, Stevens on twenty four, I'm on twenty six. Chris only needs to get two more to win the game, uh, and Gradle has three riddles. Can he do it this week? Right, that's a message to David Nisbet, who's been messaging me every week for April to get this riddle on the podcast, mate. And <laughs> mate, got a riddle for the podcast. Did you get this? Right. So, and he messages it every week, but. We used it right at the start. Oh, so did he miss that? Did I'm getting them, mate. You don't need to keep... <laughs> did you get this, <laughs> Lol? What, what, what's his name? Explanation mark, David Nisbet. Why, why don't you just reply to the guy, for fuck's sake? Because he's busy... What am I doing now? Every, he's busy replying <laughs> to everybody on Twitter, man. Give the guy a break. <laughs> so we've done this guy, David. Right? <laughs> so you can stop that. Um... <laughs> Right. Okay, here comes the first one. Fucking hell, man. What the fuck? Who's that? Are you just swearing at the listeners again? No, Gregor? no, no, no. I'm just trying to think if I can even say that. <laughs> um, right, here we go. First one. <laughs> Ch- chugging on a boat. Chugging on a boat. Wank sailor. Nope. Wank ship. Chugging on a boat. David Seaman. No. <laughs> <laughs> uh, Chugging on a boat. Ah, ship. 
It's actually quite a good one, actually. I, I've got to say, this is my, my dental hygienist man again, so well done. Oh, dental hygienist. Uh, you were just... slagging him off a couple of weeks ago. I know, I know. Gado, I know. you're so fickle, man. Sorry, bro. <laughs> Sorry, bro. I actually need to get back up to that, Dennis, because my crown's failed. Chugging on a boat. That, by the way, that that's not her fault. She's my hygienist. It's a, yeah, okay. yeah, just let us think of the riddle game. <laughs> Thanks for the info, though. <laughs> yeah. uh, Chucking on a boat. That's a quite good. That's a decent one, that one. Is your first name Juan? No. Is it to do with wanking, though? I would. What do you think? Well, chugging might be something. I think chugging or like eating chuggy. What else do you chug? Well, a train chugs, doesn't it? it goes oh, that's chug- true. Chug a train. Chug a train. Chug a train. Duck gum. Really difficult to concentrate, man. Uh, well. <laughs> especially, when, especially when you're chugging. <laughs> I thought you'd rather go that straight away. Oh, it's a Celtic player then. He's no, it's no. All oh, right. Hey, right, come on, man, hurry up! I'm not fucking day. I I don't know this one. Nah, move on. Use well, use use I'm way to tap. I'm way to tap. I'm tapping as well. I've got it, Matt. Right, well, he's a clue then. I've got it, Matt. I didn't know this was this guy's first name. We're all done. We're out. Right, go. Give a clue. Right, if, so if I was talking about this player, I would never mention his first name. So that's why he's good. Maradona. No. But has, has Maradona got... What is he, is, what's his first name? Diego. Oh, Diego sorry. Maradona. Fuck's <laughs> 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 uh, Cher. Cher. Maradona. <laughs> Pink. <laughs> Grado. Grado. Oh, Who is that? Who is that? Nah, I don't know. But I'm going I'm to take it that bit where I forgot what Diago Maradona's first name is, man. It's no, Diego, mate, not Diago. <laughs> Who is that? Right, we're ready. Aye. The wank were Canu. Canu! Hey, well that, done, the great call. That's on a Instagram. fucking belter, man. Well, well, well played. played. Do you know what I was well thinking of? Uh, Canoe, and I was going to say John Carew. I don't know why. That's oh, a yes. belter, man. Hey, I'm now going to go to Connor J. Connor Ja. That Connor Golden? No, Connor. No, no, no. This is the guy's name, and he keep and I, I, I kept slagging him, writing these are shite. <laughs> um, so he's got a good one this week, I think. All right, let's go for this. This one is Toll Shrinking. For fuck's sake. <laughs> But it's Chris Smalling, Chris Smalling. Chris Smalling. Chris, oh, nice. That was Stevie. That was Stevie. That was Stevie. That was Stevie, definitely. Thank you, Toll. I was very in there quick, John. Come on. Only one behind you now, John. Come on. Wow. Come on. Oh, right. <laughs> they have it, man. Uh, okay, third and final riddle for this evening. Miss Robinson taking legal action against an overweight person. <laughs> Fucking hell, that's, that's, that's funny. Miss Robinson? Miss Robinson taking... <laughs> Miss Robinson taking legal action against an overweight person. I don't think, I, I don't think I'm getting any this week. Fuck's sake. Miss Robinson? What was her name in the film? Unless it's... What was her... F- I can't... E- seen the film, I can't even remember her first name in the film. What? And... Uh, and the graduate. The graduate. The graduate. Yeah. That's Mrs. Rob. That's Mrs. Robinson. Uh, Miss Robinson. Miss Robinson. Who's Miss? Who's a famous Robinson? Lucy. <laughs> Fuck's sake. Yeah. Who, who else? Keep going. <coughs> Hel- Helen. That's Helen oh, Daniels. Oh, she was Helen Daniels, wasn't she? It's it's a woman that fuck me. I've not seen her. Oh, Helen. Anne, 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 Anne. Right there we go. What was the rest of the clue? She's taking legal action against an overweight person. And so fatty. And two gets another point. Oh. And that was from Jordan Andrew Spears on Instagram. Cool beard on the profile picture. Cool, cool riddle. Thanks cool. for being a fan. You know what it's like, man? It's like it's like Toe could have won the league. It's like a team nearly winning the league and like dropping points and it's getting 
fucking put back to next week now. I know. I, mean? I know. So next week you could take it next week. So uh, we'll see if Chris wins next week. And this week's riddle for everyone listening is from listener Bentley Esteban, who says Shia LaBeouf's role as a wee boy similar to a tattoo. Shia LaBeouf's role as a wee boy similar to a tattoo. And hit the theme tune. <laughs> It's time for the Football Daft Moment of the Week, and last week's results are in. They've just come in, actually. Um, oh, and whoa. The just closed, so it might be changing as we speak, but I don't think whoever... <laughs> the winner is certainly not going to change, that's for sure. Anyway, it's oh. not changed. Uh, in last place, Chris Toll's nomination of his, when they went to in Loch Lomond, the Gaffneys oh. only got 6%, Chris. What? That's poor. Fuck you, man. Fuck you, man. You're not getting that kebab recipe now for that. Yeah, you're not getting the kebab recipe. Uh, in third place, it was my uh, nomination. First drink, last drink. Oh, that one got 19%. In second place, Gredo's choice of Michael Owen's issues after they're slacking off his daughter Gemma on the telly. Uh, only got 23%. But by a landslide this week... Gradles are Dawn got 52%, <laughs> thanks to Stephen Purden's nomination for that one, after Gradle played for Aberdeen in a charity game. And I never played Aberdeen. for Aberdeen in a charity game. I've you know what? Char- Let the truth get in the way of a good story, Graham. Shush. Yeah. Uh, See, even Kev the chef took a pop at me. I know. Stephen, you win, so you get to go first. What are you having? Well, obviously, it was a it was a short-lived tenure he's had in Aberdeen. Uh, he's obviously been getting a lot of abuse online after his debut last week, so... He's put in a transfer request, and this week my nomination is Gredo is no longer a Don. <laughs> That's definitely going to win. That is definitely, <laughs> definitely going to win. <laughs> right, uh, Gredo. I want to be back up there. You know that. <laughs> no, I mean, see, you take a couple of hours at your day, drive four hours. Oh no, here we go. You give, you give, you give. Give me, give me, give me a bit of entertainment, you know what I mean? And what do you get back? Abuse of teens on Twitter. Trolled. Cyberbullied. Trolled. A Twitcher on his stream slagging you off while playing Grand, Grand Theft Auto. You know what I mean? This, what hap- this is what happens, Grado, in the modern I day. I hate society. to say I told you so, Graham. There you go. A man coming from where you come from, go to them. Grado's no longer standing free. Oh. <laughs> <laughs> right. Grado, what are you nominating? I'm going for Tom Stoltman, Big Tom, playing in goals for the Soccer Aid World Team and sporting the number 55. Of course the he did. man in the world. But what about yeah. that, though, Grado? Tom Stoltman's 55. There was Martin Combs at 67. Hands across the divide, cuddling each other at the end. You know, I, I like to see that. I like to see that. But I have to say, Combs got absolutely skinned for pace for that boy, Tom Grennan, who, by the way, what a he player. player. What a player! What Tom Grennan was good. Tom Grennan and it was another boy that was good for By the world. Way, player and all. There was a, there was a few players, but see Tom Grennan, he's the worst since fucking Mo Johnson. He was playing for the World Eleven the year before, and now he, now he's playing for England. So <laughs> Harry's, fucking Lee Harry's, Mack, Lee Mack, uh, fucking scored the winning penalty for the World Eleven. There you go. Anyway, hmm. we're, we're getting the boy up, up the boy up front for the World Eleven. I think he's scored the, the penalty. Four in a row, isn't he, or something? He, he always plays well. He used to go in Love Island. He was good, man. Aye. Oh, Kem. By the way, would you make Love Island, Bob? Oh, fuck it. Mate, mate, I think he's getting better now, man. Mate, I'm telling you what, so you're getting banged for your buck. It usually takes a couple of weeks to kick in, man, it's but I'm loving it. Now. That's exactly what you and Nick have been texting. <laughs> it's, it's someone no get, it's, did someone no get a wee, uh, a wee hand shandy the other day there? No. no. I, did what that not happen? What the fuck's a hand shandy? What's a hand shandy? Is that what he's called Honies and Falkirk? A hand shandy? And Wanko Canoe. I mean, the Wanko Canoe. <laughs> <laughs> they got a wee canoe the other week. Did that not happen? Did somebody get a wee fucking chugging on a boat the other night? Did someone not get a wee canoe the other night? I heard that, no. No, no. There, was... Uh, there was... There was Tasha and... What's his name? And the... That was the one. Aye, and he got a wee canoe. Uh, but a couple of guys have been in there. And, uh, oh. Boy, fed them, yeah. bro. What about the guy that fucking gave up his professional rugby contract to go into the show? Is that? Aye, that's, that's Jack's. 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 He got punished place, didn't he? Aye. 
You're a bit weak about it. I like to use like the fly, but there's a few fucking stories there, and I'll fucking rest weak at the ground. Like you, that. You, know, you, know you know who that, you know that sounded like, Stevie? That's just. That was what told me. That, that was just like fucking. Okay, okay, so, Grado's so, going for Tom Stoltman. Chris, what are you going for? I'm going to go for the madman that was up giving his wedding speech. And he's got this heartfelt wedding speech about how he's met somebody that's gotten through the past past. Would you like to play the audio, Chris? Because I think we can play the audio of this. So this is what you're talking about, Chris. This one is, one is to the person who makes me happy every time I see their face. She's not even looking at me. The person who reminds me to appreciate, to appreciate the little things in life has made me believe oh. that anything's possible. You have truly turned my life around in such a short space of time, and I love you for it. I would highly recommend you all find someone that makes you feel the way that I do. So I would very much appreciate it if you could all raise a glass. To Big Ange, what's the point <laughs> 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 nice. <laughs> A decent part to be fair. Later on the half now, John. I think I've been at a wedding where that was. was oh, that, for God's sake. John, was that, was it, John, was that somewhere near? I don't know. I don't know where that was, Grado. I don't mm. know where it is, but it's a good nomination, Chris. It's, it's good banner. It's good banner. I, I tell you something. He won't be going down under that night. <laughs> <laughs> Brilliant. Uh, good nomination like that. Uh, Lister's nomination comes from Bob Bag 1983, and it has to be. I don't know if you guys saw this. The Aussie keeper Andrew Redmayne. Did you see this? So he, <laughs> it was a penalty shootout against Peru uh, for the World Cup qualification. He came on one of these goalkeepers that had been brought on in the 119th minute. Right now, this guy was a total nutter. He was dancing along the goal line like most goalies do to put uh, obviously the player off. Right. Oh, I need to see this. Uh, 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 and basically, what uh, more shit housery than that though? Wait, 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 more shit housery than that though. Even better than dancing along the the, the goal line. And actually, he got nominated uh, by the Wiggles. The Wiggles have inducted him into their Hall of Fame for dancing and renamed him the Grey Wiggle because he's wearing a grey top. So the, he's now with the Wiggles. But the best bit about this shit housery was he took the Peru's goalkeepers water bottle which had all the instructions of the penalty takers and what direction to go to and he threw it away so oh, yeah. the, the Peru oh, yeah. bottle boy didn't know which way they're going incidentally martin boyle missed the first penalty in that match so that is a uh, bob agnick 83's nomination is for andrew redmayne aussie goalkeeper now legend and wiggle so that is this week's listener nomination and if you want to vote on football daft moment of the week what are we having stephen purden Grado is no longer a don. Grado! Oh, what do I think of something? What do you say? Tom? You think of something? Chris? I love Big Ange. <laughs> Andrew Redmayne, the wiggle, <clears throat> as uh, the listener nomination, and Grado. Tom dons the twi- Oh, fuck. Oh. <laughs> fuck, <laughs> fuck off. <laughs> <laughs> Tom, Tom Don, Tom Don, Tom, fifty-five. Yeah. Tom, Tom, Tom wears fifty-five shirts. They were so I would, I would have went for Tom Cat myself. Tom Cat, I like a cat. I, I'll say that next week. But Tom Cat, fifty. Tom, Tom Cat, fifty-five. Aye, there we get it. There we go. That's your football <laughs> daft moments of the week. Vote on yours. Get involved now at football daft pod. <laughs> And that is it for this week's show. Oh. Thank you very much for listening. Remember, sign up to our Patreon if you want. The video version, you get to see Chris eat crisps. You get to see all manner of different things. You get to see Grado's penalty miss as well. If you sign up to the Patreon as well, patreon.com forward slash football. That, I really do hope we've started a few with this Twitcher. It's a Twitcher. That's a bird watcher, isn't it? It's a, a, what do you call someone that works? It must be a Twitcher. Someone that does stuff. I thought, I thought so, that would be somebody with like a facial tick. <laughs> <laughs> anyway, uh, thank you very much for listening. Uh, Masters are coming up. We we put up the the Rangers, the Rangers and Celtic <laughs> Masters team have been put up for that. Oh, team. I can't wait the for Rangers this. Team, man, looks brilliant. <clears throat> oh, so the Rangers team would give the current team a fucking mm. run for the money. I know that some good players playing for Rangers. Quell I'm telling you right now, player of the tournament will be Pedro Mendes. 
Pedro Mendes is playing, Barry Ferguson's playing. Frank Barry's Bruno. always good at these six aside things. Is it he six is. aside? He is. No, oh, you're not having him. And then we've got a few decent players playing for uh, Celtic as well. Petrov is playing for Celtic. Who have you got? No, you have got, I mean, the, the, the strikers for both teams aren't brilliant because I think you've got, uh, who have you got? Carlton Cole up front, Chris? Carlton Cole and Simon Donnelly. Simon Donnelly, like, aye. Look at that midfield, but Joe Ledley, Chris, Chris Commons, Joe Ledley, and, Petrov. and Petrov's no bad. Uh, and then Kelvin Wilson playing at the back. Bloody hell. Mark Wilson is struggling with injury, so he's playing for the he's on big rab in the sticks. But, I mean, the Rangers team, they've got Michael Moles and Chris Boyd up front, Pedro Mendes, Lee McCulloch and Barry Ferguson in the midfield. Oh, is, it, is, Alan, that so, is that sold out yet? Alan Hutton, uh, Quell, oh, I don't oh, think it is, no. Folks, I'm going to go with Leo. No, yeah, 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 yeah. We should go all together. I and film, film, film stuff outside it for Patreon. Yeah, we'll do that. We'll do that. I'm not sure. I'm just thinking, probably don't go. I probably already got a deal with them or something. Who like cares? <laughs> no, 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 no. Aye, we go like WCW too. Aye, right, right, aye, aye man. Nitro. Roll up, right. aye. Or wear DX t-shirts. Aye, we will right. get a what do you call it? We'll get a tanker. Fucking right, right man. Right, so we're rolling into the Masters tournament. We'll be down there. Hopefully, we'll see you there as well. Thank you very much for listening. Oh, to by the way, Ricky, show. go back about the coldest park. All oh, right, coldest park. Before we go, what is the coldest park, according says, to Ricky Little? You don't, says, you, don't, you don't really notice it once you're playing. He says, I've played in much colder games away from Gayfield. Gayfield. My dad in that says it's freezing in the stands all through the winter. Right, so he hasn't told us what. The- Puts a bow on that, doesn't it? Right, follow, follow up then and find out what Puts the Puts a bow on that one. Is. There we go. Uh, and that is it for this week's uh, Football Daft. Thanks very much for listening. Subscribe on Apple or wherever you get your podcast. Leave it's it Sarah, it. Be Sarah. What are we calling this week's show? Uh, whatever will be, will be. Whatever will be, will be after last week's case of that. Also, oh, I've got a trilogy, but next week's be called. What will be, will be. <laughs> <laughs> right, okay. There we go. Case of that, uh, whatever will be, will be. The future's, the future's not ours to see. Right, we'll keep going with this theme then. That's uh, the, what this week's show is. Thank you very much for listening to Football Daft. <laughs> we will see you on the next one. Audio from